welcome back to the channel. Today we're discussing the astrology of not only Scorpio season but eclipse season in November 2021. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for regular astrology updates on what the stars have in store for you. This is not just any kind of Scorpio season because now we're moving into eclipse season and this means that it's going to be quite surprising as far as the month goes coupled with a lot of oppositions between the Scorpio placements and Uranus in Taurus. Now, Scorpio itself is a rather taboo and intense sign to the point I am surprised that YouTube has not tried to demonetize it yet but Scorpio is always an interesting season because it is a season of change, rebirth and growth and it is going to be facing these oppositions now with Uranus in Taurus as it has done every year since Uranus went into Taurus but this one has a particularly Scorpiophonic play to it because Mars, Scorpio's traditional ruler, is in Scorpio as well. Not only that, we have a partial lunar eclipse in Taurus coming up on the 19th. So let's just go through the astrological overview of this month. We have the new moon in Scorpio on the 4th of November. And that new moon is going to be opposite Uranus. It is going to be a super moon. It's going to be a new beginning, a fertile ground in whatever house Scorpio rules in your chart. And it's going to face some sort of surprise and revelation from wherever Taurus is in your chart. So a lot of people might be finding around this new moon that there are surprises afoot. There is a video on this already up on my channel that you can go and watch for a more in-depth view on what it means for your sign. In terms of the world stage, we may notice that there are a few falls from graces, secrets revealed, particularly surrounding leadership, world leaders, and people in positions of authority because around this time, the sun in Scorpio is also going to be opposing Uranus. And with that, with the sun ruling leaderships and those who are famous, we may experience some shocking revelations regarding those who hold power on the world stage. The 5th of November, Venus is going to move into Capricorn right up until March 2022, so you may as well get comfy with this placement. If you have any planets in Capricorn, they will be touched by this particular transit. Wherever Capricorn is in your chart, Venus is going to be having an extended stay there. Venus is a benefic. Venus can bring a lot of blessings to this area. But because there's going to be a retrograde period, there could also be some revision and some changes afoot in terms of how you work with Capricorn energy in your chart, particularly in themes of love and romance as it is Venus, but also financially. So Venus moving into Capricorn this month is probably going to be bringing you some blessings in that Capricorn house. On the same day, Mercury moves into Scorpio, adding to the Scorpiophonic season, and Mercury is going to be meeting up with Mars this month again, this time in the sign of Scorpio. So Mars and Mercury conjunct in Scorpio can bring a lot of directness. It can be very um, honest sometimes to the point of being a little bit harsh. Whenever it's Mercury and Mars meet up words can be quite harsh. Because it's Scorpiophonic, there could be a revenge element to this. People could really try and lash out with their words. There could be a Scorpio stinger at foot wanting to protect yourself from being hurt. So people might be a little bit more provocative with their words. People might be a bit more reactive as well at certain points this month. Because Mercury is to do with short distance trips like cars, traveling, um, short distances and things like that, just be extra cautious, try not to be too aggressive on the roads, as it were, because you might find yourself a little bit too hasty to your own detriment. That's just something to watch out for with Mercury and Mars conjunct. A consistent theme this month is going to be the oppositions between Scorpio and Taurus and the squares between Scorpio and Aquarius. So Scorpio season is going to activate the fixed square of Saturn and Uranus that has been a key theme in 2021, meaning that there is going to be a little bit of a pressured explosive energy occurring this month, particularly with Mars. Now we experienced this sort of energy back in August in Leo season, whenever the Leo placements were joining the square. And because we're going to be experiencing some squares to Saturn, the Scorpio Aquarius squares can be a little bit of inbuilt, inbuilt pressure socially in particular because it's Aquarius. There can be issues and pressure surrounding restrictions because Saturn's in Aquarius ruling social restrictions. There can be a little bit of pressure surrounding um, 
you know, how we feel as a society, how we feel as the collective. There can be pressures there, especially if secrets have been revealed or secrets have been kept. It can also be to do with the financial system because Scorpio and Taurus is the financial axis. So you could be experiencing this month in your own personal life or more so on the world stage, some developments, shocks and surprises within the financial system. It could also be an opportunity for something quite uh, unique or innovative as well, of course, with it being Uranus in the mix. Uh, sometimes when these squares in oppositions with Uranus can uh, grow genius <laughs> through tension. So there could be something coming up in the financial industry that could either be shocking, surprising, or somewhat innovative or somewhat reactive, as it were. But because we're going to be dealing with this fixed T-square, the aspect to Saturn means that Mars in particular squaring off Saturn can build up a lot of pressure, and then when Mars opposes Uranus, there can be a bit of an explosion. Sometimes with Mars and Uranus, this can be in terms of geographical issues, it can be in terms of explosions, earthquakes, volcanoes, things like that. But because we've got it in a water sign this time, um, with Uranus, it could be to do with the electrical system. There could be power cuts, there could be power outages, uh, there could be connections between water and electricity around this time. They could just come up as themes in the news. That's something that can be quite typical with Mars and Uranus. We also have a partial lunar eclipse in Taurus happening on the 19th of November. It's at 27 degrees of Taurus. So if you have any placements that are late degree Taurus, say you have around 25 to 29 degrees of Taurus, you could be finding around this full moon that something is being opened up, something is being expanded, something is being revealed with you. Now, because it's Taurus, it could very much be to do with what you value, what you place your importance on. It could be to do with finances. It could be news surrounding the financial system in general because of its opposition to the Scorpio sun. Um, and it could be that this theme is going to continue over the next year and a half or so because we are going to be having the nodes shifting into Scorpio and Taurus and this full moon partial eclipse is actually touching the north node which is going to move into Taurus shortly. So this is going to be showing us what the direction and theme might be for the next couple of years particularly financially um, but also in terms of our value system what it is that we place importance on and also in terms of our food something is associated with Taurus is food. So these themes could be coming up around this full moon in terms of the world stage. For everybody personally it's going to be a reassessment of what you value and what truly matters to you is Taurus and also what makes you feel secure. So because this full moon partial eclipse is actually in a nice uh, um, aspect to Neptune and Pisces, there's a sextile there, there's also a trine from the Sun and Scorpio to Neptune and Pisces around this time, this full moon partial eclipse, while eclipses can be quite chaotic, they can actually also be quite healing and with Neptune in the mix there might be this form of healing, there can be themes of forgiveness, there can be themes of spiritual understanding, spiritual evolution because when we have a meet up between the Scorpio placements and Neptune and Pisces there can be actually a lot of forgiveness going on, there can be a lot of um, opening and healing that's not necessarily associated with Scorpio itself. Scorpio is a very psychological sign but it can also be a very closed sign and a very ruthless and unforgiving sign when crossed. That's why Scorpio has the singer, the stinger, <laughs> the singer. Um, so with this particular trine to Neptune that we're also going to be seeing with Mars trining Neptune later on, I believe in the 29th of November, at that point there could be a lot of healing old wounds, there could be a lot of healing old rivalries, um, relationships with people that have hurt you or upset you, especially maybe when Mars and Mercury were conjunct this month. But there is a bit of tension brewing with the Scorpio-Saturn placements. I also think because the Sun in Scorpio, Sun ruling leadership and Jupiter being in Aquarius, there could be with those two squaring, I believe they're squaring on the 15th of November, there could be a bit of disillusionment and discord between the people and leadership, which is kind of a theme for 2021 anyway, but Scorpio season might expose it based on what it is that we come to learn about people in power uh, or what's actually going on behind the scenes that we might not have been made aware of. We have the sun moving into Sagittarius on the 22nd and things get a lot more lighthearted, things get a lot more joyous and optimistic. We are heading into eclipse season though, so there is going to be changes on the Sagittarian foot. Uh, these will be the wrapping up eclipses of the Gemini Sagittarius 
axis. So there's going to be something new springs from these likely for everybody wherever Saturn, not Saturn, Sagittarius is falling in your chart. There's likely to be something evolving and growing and changing there as well as where Gemini is in your chart. There could be something being wrapped up there or being understood in terms of your destiny or what lessons you've learned from where uh, the house that Gemini rules in your chart or your Gemini placement. So we do have this move into Sagittarius season and into eclipse season, but eclipses with mutable signs, people find it to be that little bit more adaptable. With the full moon partial eclipse in Taurus, there could be a case where you're realizing what you need to let go of in terms of what you're holding too tightly to in a way that is based on possessiveness um, or a lack mentality, something you might need to let go of in order to experience something more profound and something more suitable to you and what you value now as a person. So our value systems are changing up a lot this month. There is going to be tension between the Scorpio secrets, the Scorpio possessiveness, the Scorpio possibly paranoia, suspicion, jealousy, but also the Scorpio regeneration and rebirth and what needs to be innovated in terms of how we value things, how we spend money, how we work with money, what the financial systems are, but also what makes us feel secure and what makes us feel grounded. So there is this opposition energy throughout the month that could be because it's Uranus um, and especially because Mars is in the mix, it could be kind of volatile, could be kind of eruptive in some places, but could also be a catalyst for great breakthroughs at the same so let's do a tarot card for Scorpio season and see what we get, what the overall theme is for November 2021. I think one of the main highlights for me is probably the fact that Venus is moving into Capricorn. Pay attention to that because it's a long moving transit. It's going to be right up until March 2022. And it's going to ask you to allow in some blessings in that area of the sky for you, that house in your chart that Capricorn rules, allowing in some blessings but also maybe some forgiveness for some healing the past, possibly for some reconnections in the place it falls. You know when Venus goes through a retrograde period wherever it falls in your chart there can be a need to do some healing in that area. You know a, a need to smooth things over sometimes a need to be graceful and to be loving where it was maybe hard to be loving and graceful before. So let's see November 2021. Do this one. Ooh, the five of cups. Interesting energy. So underneath, <laughs> underneath we actually have judgment for November. So five of cups is always for me a card of perspective. It's always a card of understanding that you know in the traditional rider weight it is a cloaked figure that is feeling really very sad looking at the three cups that have spilled and not realizing that there's two cups still standing and the two of cups in traditional tarot is all about love and connection so this month with scorpio season scorpio is a sign that rules intimacy and closeness and depth of emotion and it may feel with this month that you're experiencing change and anytime people go through a change of self, there is a shedding of skin. There is a shedding of that snake skin. Snake is actually one of the archetypes for Scorpio. Shedding that skin, embracing that change, something that also comes with eclipse season. And so with this season, this month in particular, you might find yourself shedding a skin. You might find yourself considering the past, what you've missed, what you didn't do, what you wish you'd done differently. Uh, or the hurts that came up for you. Scorpio season has a way of making people aware of the hurts they faced before and how it can affect them in terms of love and connection in the future. So with this Five of Cups, it's very likely for a lot of people that there is a Two of Cups offering. There could be this connection in your life that's really very deep and really very beautiful, but you might carry a lot of paranoia or suspicion. And this can be a friendship, this can be a love, this can be... Uh, in a relationship, this can be in family, this can even be in your career, you know, people can get really very badly hurt in their careers as well, due to failure, due to bosses, due to anything. Um, all areas of life can experience that sort of three of cups fallen energy, that loss. And with the two of cups always still standing in the five of cups, it always reminds us to keep our perspective primarily, and it's good to look back, it's good to heal. 
but to keep our focus primarily on what's going right, what's going well, what is working for us and what makes us feel happy. The past is a place to revisit, to heal, yes, but you shouldn't get stuck there. So this Five of Cups is asking us all this month to really pay attention to what it is that you have, what it is that you're grateful for, what it is that is working for you. You know, as I say, that partial eclipse in Taurus is teaching us what we value the most. Focus on that. And maybe with this Mars Neptune trine happening later on in the month, or even the Sun Neptune trine happening, or uh, the Mercury Neptune trine, all of the different Scorpio placements trining Neptune, it's really going to give you an opportunity to forgive the past or to heal from the past or to let go of something that maybe in or ordinarily in Scorpio season could be quite hard to do. So that is what I think the message of the Five of Cups is. Focusing on the love and emotions that are working for you, that are feeling good to you and taking your attention away from the past and the things that have not yet succeeded but maybe led you to where you needed to be at the same time. So that is the card for November. The Timestamps are listed below for your individual zodiac sign reading. You can watch your sun, moon and rising. Rising is the most applicable to astrology, but each sign will get an overall theme card at this time as well. So you can watch your sun, moon and rising for all the messages you need. So that's what I have for you in November. If you have watched this far and you, this far, if you have watched this far, Mercury's still in shadow. If you've watched this far and you are a Scorpio born in November or Sagittarius born in November, comment your birthday in the comment section below. Hello, let's all get in on the birthday love, especially if you're born on November 14th, because that is mine. So have a beautiful November, folks, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Welcome to November. So Aries, we have a lot of activity happening in your eighth house. Now, the eighth house is quite feared and misunderstood, I have noticed. As someone who's just had a month of eighth house transits, I can speak to this a little bit for you in a way that might be somewhat reassuring. So the eighth house rules psychological breakthroughs, it rules the most intimate side of our relationships, and it also rules our financial relationships with other people. So one of the things that could become quite clear to you this month, Aries, is where on a psychological level you could be indulging in behaviour that is self-sabotaging in nature. Sometimes with the eighth house season, we become very aware of where we're blocking our own blessings by something rooted in psychology. The eighth house is a very investigative zone. So this month, you might be be becoming very aware of what it is that you're doing uh, on a subconscious level or psychological level that is blocking you from what you want. And this can be something that actually helps you get unstuck. So this season, pay attention to anything that comes up as a red flag in your own behavior, something that alerts you to what you might need to change internally so that you can get the best results for yourself externally. The eighth house is that kind of nature. It really lets you look inward and see, you know, maybe I'm getting in my own way here or maybe I'm avoiding this type of thing that I actually really want because of this event. There's a way of unraveling it back to its actual source in uh, November Aries. It's also a time when relationships could substantially deepen this month because we do have a lot of Scorpio energy. This is your eighth house of intimacy. You could experience more closeness, especially when Mercury goes into Scorpio on the fifth. You could be having more deep conversations based on intimacy, truth and parts of the soul that are only exposed to the people that you are closest to. There's a lot of intimacy flying around this month with you, Aries. And that starts with a new moon in Scorpio on the 4th, which is gonna oppose Uranus in Taurus. So this new moon for you is likely based on finance. It's likely based on your relationships with other people financially and how maybe something in your own personal finances has to initiate a change in your joint finances. So this could be you unexpectedly come into money. This could be you unexpectedly come into um, a new source of money or come up with a new source of money or there's a surprise for you in store financially that could benefit a new beginning or initiate a new beginning in your joint finances with other people, particularly a partner or similarly it could be that your partner is coming into money and this is orchestrating a new beginning for you as a pair. We also have Venus going into Capricorn on the 5th and it's going to be there until March 2022, bringing a lot of benefic energy to your career, to you falling into favour with your boss or with 
potential employers. This is a great time for interviews. This is a great time to be headhunted. This is a great time for opportunities to fall in your lap or get a promotion, Aries. We do have uh, an opposition between your ruler Mars and Uranus. And I believe that it's happening here according to my notes uh, on the 17th of November. Now, because Mars is your ruler, this is significant. Mars opposing Uranus. Mars will be in your eighth house of finances with other people, joint finances, psychology, opposing Uranus in your second house. With this particular energy, be wary of being too impulsive or aggressive in financial matters or relationship matters. Be careful of being impulsive around this time. You might do it in um, you know, your relationships, your finances, you could simply do it out and about because Mars rules your first house. Don't push yourself too hard. Take as many deep breaths as you can around the 17th because you don't want to do something impulsive. That day could be quite volatile for you. We do have a full moon eclipse in Taurus on the 19th. It's at 27 degrees of Taurus. It's partial and it's going to be a north node eclipse. So this is ushering in a new phase in your life. It's going to give you a little bit of a glimpse into what the themes are for the next couple of years with the nodes changing into Taurus and Scorpio. With the North Node going into your second house at the beginning of 2022, this eclipse is going to show you what that means for you. It's likely going to be a big focus on your finances. It's also likely to be a big focus on your money and what it is that you value in general. So pay attention to what themes come up around this time. It's likely to do with your money, but it's also to do with your confidence and what you value. Also what you spend your money on. So there could be something quite significant in terms of expenditure around that eclipse for you, Aries. We then have Sagittarius season beginning on the 22nd. That is a time for you that opens a window of travel opportunities of changing your philosophy your viewpoint on the world it's actually going to be a wonderful time to travel in general it's going to be a wonderful time to explore a different city a different country anywhere that is a little bit different to where you currently are taking some sort of voyage taking some sort of trip and also learning something studying for something this could be a time when you're taking exams or you're expecting exam results because there's going to be um Mercury moving into Sagittarius as well in this sector on the 24th. Again, that makes the chances of traveling even better, the chances of positive study even better as well. And on the 29th, we have Mars and Scorpio trining Neptune in your 12th house, which is a beautiful healing time for you. A time as an Aries to allow your emotions to come up, to do a little bit of soul searching, to do a little bit of occult practice, maybe learn some tarot or maybe learn some astrology or practice divination. Could be very insightful and very healing for you around this time, Aries. So that is what I have for you astrologically. We have as your tarot card, the Ten of Pentacles, which is no surprise as there's so much focus this month on your finances, on your money, and on your career. It's likely to be that these things are going to be of benefit to you this month, Aries. Ten of Pentacles is to do with financial abundance. It's to do with time with your family and with your extended family. It can be family reunions, but it is most likely to do with your career and your money taking a positive turn or a successful completion. Some of you could be reaching a milestone in your career, getting a promotion, some of you could be getting a pay rise, some of you could be getting a new job. If you get a new job it's likely that it pays more. It does seem that there's a lot of focus on your finances and your career and with Venus doing an extended stay in your 10th house this is really going to be a time for you Aries that benefits your career, your long-term goals and your future successes. So that is what I have for you Aries and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Taurus, Sun, Moon and Rising. Welcome to your November horoscope. Taurus, you are <laughs> that partial lunar eclipse is in your sign, meaning you are stealing the show a little bit from Scorpio's you rascal. So Taurus, let's get to that in a second, but there are other things to bring up this month. So we have Mars, we have the new moon and we have Mercury all in your seventh house of relationships and partnerships, as well as the sun being there right up until the 22nd. There is a spotlight, there is a focus on your relationships, your significant other. There could be a need to put some focus and attention towards your spouse, your um, partner, your long-term relationship, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your best friend. Uh, Taurus, it could be maybe because they're Scorpios and it's their birthday month or something like that, but it's going to bring your relationships one-on-one -on -one into very clear focus this month, Taurus. 
but it is likely because of the oppositions to your sign that there's a need to balance out some inequalities or imbalances between your needs and your partner's needs. It might be that you need something new this month with Uranus in your sign opposing the Scorpio energies. You might be changing your viewpoint, you might be changing your mind, you might be changing what you want for the future. You might be requiring a little bit more adaptability and flexibility which could really surprise a lot of people in your life, Taurus. You could be really considering what your personal needs and wants are uh, to make you feel free, to make you feel like a free range bull. You know, you're looking for a free range uh, relationship this month, Taurus. And that's not to say you're looking for anything polyamorous or anything like that, you're gonna leave anybody. It's not what that means. It just means you're looking for a little bit more um, excitement potentially, or you're looking for somebody, if you're single, who really validates your particular interests and what you need, which is a good thing, Taurus. So the new moon in Scorpio and the fourth do have a video up on this. It's more specific. It's in your seventh house. It's at 12 degrees of Scorpio. If you want to manifest a new relationship for yourself, this is the new moon for a ritual to do so, but it's very important, Taurus, that you're clear on what it is that you want in a partner um, or how you want your current relationship to progress because with Uranus in your sign, your definition of what you need in a partnership or a relationship might be changing somewhat and might need a bit of flexibility. Venus is entering Capricorn on the 5th of November. So Venus is going to be in Capricorn for a long time, Taurus. This is going to be your ninth house of travel, your higher education and your personal philosophy or even your religion. Uh, these things are going to be in focus for you for quite a long time with Venus being there and Venus is your ruler which makes this that little bit more personal. There is going to be a Venus retrograde in December, we will get into that when the time comes because it will affect you directly. But Venus going through your ninth house means it's a wonderful time to travel. It's a wonderful time to expand your mind, your worldview. If you're single, you may meet someone from a different jurisdiction or you might meet someone related to study or mentorship even. You might meet someone that is a teacher. Um, if you are a teacher yourself or you work in legal matters, this could bring a very interesting chapter into your career as well with Venus being here. Uh, sometimes with Venus it can bring a lot of benefits with it. You know that because Venus is your ruler. We have um, Mars in your opposite sign opposing Uranus in your sign. So as far as relationships go this month, Taurus, try to be compromising. Try not to be too triggered if these energies are hitting you directly. You could be finding yourself that, you know, you could be bolting like a, a red flag to the bull. You could just be bolting at something that is a perceived slight or a perceived, um, you know, a confrontation with a relationship because of Mars going through there. There could be a little bit of butting heads with a partnership on certain matters this month, Taurus, which is something that could be affecting you and Scorpio alike. But there is going to be trining energies between the Scorpio placements in your 12th, um, 7th house and Neptune in your 11th house. So Neptune being in your 11th house, connecting with your 7th house is an opportunity for wish fulfillment, it's an opportunity for uh, manifestation. With these two connecting, it's a time for healing partnership relationship issues as well. So that's something to tap into this month, especially around the 12th. Things do seem to be their most volatile on the 17th, so do watch out for that day, especially on the roads. We're then moving into Sagittarius season, and Sagittarius season for you is going to be very intimate. It's going to be based on closeness, connecting with someone on a deeper level. It also brings your joint financial relationships into the spotlight too. Taurus. But let's talk about the full moon partial eclipse in your sign because that's significant. So with this happening in your first house, Taurus, this is kind of prepping you for the theme of the next couple of years where the nodes are going. So the nodes are going to be changing. I believe in January, the north node is going to go into your sign, the south node into your seventh house. With the North Node going through your first house, this can bring you a lot of personal success, this can bring you a lot of spotlight, this can bring you a lot of um, attention, this can really focus for you as well on your destiny. Not so much on the destiny of other people, but your destiny, what your personal goals are, what your personal trajectory is, Taurus, and this could be a time for you to uh, notice around this full moon what kind of themes are coming up or what kind of thoughts or ambitions are you having because they might be putting a clue into your destiny. It is obviously going to be opposing your Scorpio seventh house 
meaning that matters could come up in relationships as well that set you up for the future or uh, show your future in some way. Now, because you're a fixed sign, this season is, of course, activating that fixed T square. Um, ugh, with Saturn being in Aquarius and Uranus being in Taurus, there is still that friction between slower moving energies in your career with Saturn or lessons in your career with Saturn and how this is impacting your need for freedom, your need for innovation, your need for progression. And then your partnership comes into the mix and says, what about me? What, what is my part to play in all this? So with this activation, again, you've been through this in August, you've been through this in May, there is, and February, there is a sense with this year that this is kind of closing up that fixed square energy and you can really start to get to grips with it and figure out what it means for you. Could be tension between your career matters, your public image and your partnerships, maybe some clashes there, and maybe some clashes between your own personal needs and want for change and your relationship and maybe even your boss as well. So Taurus, Page of Swords was your card for this month, meaning that there's going to be a lot of focus on communication. There's going to be a need to watch your words. There's going to be a need to not take other people's words too personally. With Mercury and Mars both being in Scorpio for a lot of this month, there's going to be a focus on uh, saying what it is that you mean, being honest, being direct, but also being open to the fact that people could be that little bit more sensitive to slights. This could suggest there's a lot of news coming your way, a lot of emails, Mercury's going out of shadow, you could be getting a lot of momentum on work matters, on communication matters, on technological matters, you could be finding you're really receiving a lot of phone calls, emails, text messages, um, and having a lot of conversations. You may also find this month that air sign people, Sun, Moon, Rising, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra people focus this month for you. They come into focus for you. You might also be seeing a lot of white feathers as little symbols that somebody is watching over you. So that's what I have for you, Taurus, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. So Gemini, this month for you, Scorpio season, we have the Sun, the New Moon, Mercury, and Mars all in your sixth house of work, routine, health, and service. So this house for you is going to put it's gonna have a lot of attention brought to your work life, your daily routine and how you treat your body, what your diet is, your exercise regime and your different types of rituals within your day, what you're doing with your day and also what you're doing in work. This could be a very busy time for you in work. There could be a lot of urgent matters coming up for you in work this month with Mercury and Mars both conjunct in this sector. You could be finding that you're having a bit of a clash or two with people you work with or you're getting quite frustrated with some of your colleagues around this time at Gemini, especially if you yourself are the boss or in charge of a team. You could be wanting them to have everything done yesterday or similarly you could be finding that someone's being impatient with you but because you're a Gemini I'm just going to assume it's probably the other way around. So with this particular month, this new moon is bringing a focus into what you would like your day-to-day -day routines to be. If there's something you want to change in your job or you want to initiate a project, initiating under the new moon in your sixth house is generally good. Um, initiating a new diet regimen or a new exercise regime, something like that is going to be beneficial benefit under a new moon in your sixth house. However, there is going to be an opposition to Uranus in Taurus, which is your 12th house, meaning that anything you want to start is going to require a little bit of a hidden revolution, a hidden uh, realization for yourself. With, with Uranus going through your 12th house, it's really waking you up spiritually, it's waking you up psychologically, it's waking you up in terms of your inner realm. So to have it oppose your sixth house means that in terms of health matters, fitness matters, or work matters, you need to make sure that you're undergoing a period of liberation subconsciously. Maybe you're liberating yourself from some fears or doubts in order to have a successful new beginning, Gemini. And that's a theme through this month, especially when Mars opposes Uranus. If you're feeling quite angry or aggressive with your work or your diet or your exercise or a project, you could actually be experiencing more of um, 
you know, what you're getting annoyed at could possibly be something that's more internal. It could possibly be a belief about yourself or a negative limiting belief about life in general or your capabilities. So watch out for that this month with Uranus going through your 12th house. It really wants you to liberate yourself spiritually and psychologically. So having some kind of routine or practice that allows you to do that is going to be benefic for you. We have Venus going into Capricorn for an extended stay. Now, Venus going into Capricorn for you, Gemini, is going to be an interesting one, I have to say, because it's going to be your eighth house. Your eighth house is to do with intimacy, shared resources, it's to do with psychological matters, it's to do with what is needing to be rebirthed or egoic death. So with Venus staying in this particular house for a very long time, this is really going to make you acutely aware of what you bring to intimate relationships, how comfortable you are with closeness, how comfortable you are with intimacy. This could bring some transformations into your relationship life, but also financially where you deal with other people. Uh, this could be you as a landlord, this could be you in terms of mortgages. You might be benefiting from these type of things for the foreseeable. You might be benefiting financially coming into some money because of a partner or because of a joint investor or something like this. Now Venus is going to go retrograde in December but we'll talk about that when it comes to it. For now, enjoy the benefits that come with that particular cycle. We have a new moon partial eclipse on the 19th in Taurus which again is your 12th house. So there is a lot of focus this month for you Gemini on your inner world. The 12th house is the subconscious. It's a lot of the time the stuff we're not really aware of unless you have 12th house transits or placements you can go through life for a very long time without that inner questioning. For you this full moon partial eclipse might illuminate where you would like to see a therapist or you would like to work with a psychologist or do counselling or you might like to go on a healing routine retreat. This could be to do with as well hidden expenses. It can be to do with long distance travel. So you could be having matters of these come up around that full moon but do pay attention to it because it's going to show you a theme for the next couple of years because the north node is going to move out of your sign into your 12th house meaning that the work you've been doing for yourself um, the things you've been pursuing for yourself, now you're going to get to grips with your inner world rather than your image. You know, you're going to get to grips with your inner psychological yearnings and learn about what makes you tick. Maybe learn about some self-sabotaging behaviours, maybe learn why certain things have happened. It is a window to the past in a different perspective and an opportunity to heal from past experiences. It's very cleansing for you, Gemini. And then on the 22nd, we're going to have the sun move into your seventh house. Mercury is going to shortly follow into your seventh house as well. And this seventh house season for you is going to open you up to eclipse season with your sign and your opposite sign, Sagittarius, meaning that your personal image and your relationships are going to be coming into focus, particularly your relationships, Gemini. This could be a season where you meet somebody special or you um, solidify a significant bond. We also have a Mars-Neptune trine to finish off the month. And this is quite nice because Mars is going to be in your sixth house of work and it's going to be trining Neptune in your career zone, meaning that you can really heal some aggressions within your workplace or regarding a project and focus on a more idealistic future of your work life and your professional life in general. So that's what I have for you, Gemini. Your Oracle card, well, your Tarot card was the Queen of Pentacles, meaning that there is going to be benefits coming to your career this month, your money, your finances are going to be in focus. You could also be dealing with Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. There's also a lovely butterfly in this, which is about embracing change, Gemini. And I think with Venus, going into your eighth house, you're going to embrace a lot of positive transformation of yourself psychologically. Venus going through the eighth house can really help you heal from the past, especially in relationships or financial matters, but it does seem like you might be benefiting quite a lot financially this month, Gemini, especially when it comes to people you work with or earth signs, as I say, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, for you. So that's what I have for you, Gemini, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Welcome to November. So, Cancer, we have a lot of activity in your fifth house, which is the pleasure zone. It is to do with happiness, romance, joy, fun. It's also to do with fertility, your children. 
and it's to do with your creativity, where you perform uh, and the arts. So we have a new moon there that means that anything in that particular sector, this is a new beginning for you. It is going to be opposite Uranus in your 11th house. There's a lot of oppositions to your 11th house this month, Cancer, so do be mindful that in terms of your friendships, your social relationships, your charitable endeavours, or even your online persona or your social networking, you might be embracing a bit of change this month. You might be embracing a bit of uh, a realization, a revolution, a rebellion, um, or trying to you know generate change and innovation in your friendship and social sector, and this could be something that is needing to be balanced with your relation, your you know romantic relationships, the people you date, um, or your children's life, or it could be that you are needing to find balance between what society and social relationships need for you and what you need to do in order to be happy. This month wants to put a lot of focus on your happiness and you could find that maybe changes or shocks or surprises in terms of your friendships or in terms of your social relationships are posing an opposition to what it is that directly makes you feel happy and loved and fulfilled. And there could be some need to balance out these particular energies cancer if you're looking for love or you're looking to start a creative project or you're looking to conceive there could be an element of surprise coming to a new beginning associated with these on the 4th of november wonderful new moon to set intentions there is a sense that no matter how clear you are there could be a surprise in store and uranus could bring a lot of change and innovation to what it is that you're hoping to manifest under this new moon if you do a new moon ritual as i say Fifth house, you could manifest something new in terms of love, in terms of creativity, in terms of happiness, and in terms of your children. If these are things that you want to manifest for yourself, I suggest you do that in the new moon, um, especially as we're leading towards eclipse season. So speaking of eclipse season, we do have a partial lunar eclipse, partial lunar eclipse in Taurus. And Taurus, as I say, is your 11th house. It's to do with social networking. It's to do with your friendships. It's also to do with wish fulfillment. So there could be something in that area comes up for you around the 19th of November, Cancer. And it could be quite surprising. It could be quite shocking. It could require change, immediate change, because it's an eclipse. But it's likely to give you a bit of a taste of what the next couple of years are going to have in store for you. The first eclipse of any nodal change generally shows the theme. So pay attention to what's being discussed around this time or what seems to be showing up and it could be a key theme. It's not to say the same thing is going to repeat every time but the theme is likely to be permeating through the next year at least. Um, Venus goes into your partnership zone for an extended stay Cancer. Venus goes there on the 5th so Venus being in your 7th house for such a long time could foretell marriage engagements, it could foretell a new relationship that is significant and long term. It could foretell when it's retrograde coming out of a relationship that's not working or it could foretell healing some matters in a relationship that need to be tended to or hearing from exes or having to deal with exes in some capacity. It doesn't have to be, but it could be. So other things happening for you this month, Cancer. Um, we do have a lot of oppositions happening between your fifth house and your 11th. So as I say, figuring out how to balance your happiness from other people's expectations or societal expectations. This month kind of wants you to focus on what makes you happy, to be perfectly honest. So do keep your focus and attention on that. We're then going to be moving into Sagittarius on the 22nd. Sagittarius season for you is mostly focused on your work, your day-to-day, -day, your routine. This is when you start making lists, you start getting everything in order, you start a new fitness regimen, you start a new diet, you start focusing on these matters more, um, you start tracking your macros or something like that, or you start walking more every day. You're really focusing on your fitness, your well-being, and healing your solar plexus in a big way as well it can be a thing with Sagittarius season. We do have a lovely trine coming up with the other water signs so mars in scorpio is going to try neptune in pisces on the 29th so with mars going through your fifth house you could be aggressively pursuing love romance creativity pleasure happiness all those things and you could be getting support from neptune in your ninth house of travel higher philosophy education and your higher vision for the future these two things could be aligning quite nicely as we exit november your oracle card your tarot card for this month 
Cancer is the page of Earth, which is the page of Pentacles, meaning that this month there could be a new opportunity coming to you to start something related to your routine, your work, your finances, your health, your wellness. There could be a lot of focus for you coming up in that area, Cancer. Likely a new beginning or something you have to start doing. And do pay attention around the eclipse as to what's happening for you, what the themes are, because it's likely going to show you what's coming for you in the foreseeable. But the Page of Pentacles can sometimes also be a sign to take things slow, to realise that if you want something, it can start with a small change. It doesn't have to be grandiose. So that's what I have for you, Cancer, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Leo, welcome to Scorpio season. This is for Leo, Sun, Moon and Rising. So Leo, this puts a lot of attention on your home and family matters. These are going to be taking the spotlight for most of the month. Your housing situation, your relationships with your family, particularly the mother, are going to be in focus this month in a big way. We do have a new beginning in that area for you on the 4th of November and it's going to be opposing Uranus in your 10th house of career. So this is an interesting new beginning for you in terms of your home and family and how it relates to your career matters. There could be some shocks and surprises um, for you career-wise this month, Leo, because we do have oppositions from Uranus in Taurus. Uranus is asking you to be more independent in your career. It is wonderful if you're self-employed really wonderful if you're self-employed but it can bring a lot of changes and surprises if you have someone in a position of authority or you have a client that is you know quite erratic in some uh, respects this month Leo so there could be a lot of change and innovation coming to your career this month that you have to balance out with your family matters your home matters and it might be that this causes some discord and arguments with your housemates with your family or with your past you know maybe you could find something that's happening in career is triggering a past memory for you and that's something that you have to heal and work through in Scorpio season we also have Venus going into Capricorn for an extended stay so what does that mean for you Leo well Venus is going to be in your sixth house for an extended stay and Venus is a benefic Venus is not necessarily so thrilled about the sixth house <laughs> it's a bit mundane for Venus sometimes but in terms of your routine there is a way of using this transit to make your routine your work life more beautiful so that might sound a little bit strange but this could be doing up your desk in a way that feels beautiful doing up your office in a way that feels beautiful and aesthetically pleasing this could also be incorporating more exercise or healthier food choices into your diet for those of you that want to change your health and fitness this is an extended stay where you can really transform your health and fitness especially because venus is going to connect to pluto and capricorn too you could be undergoing wonderful transformations in terms of your health um, and your health should be your priority for the next how long is it to march three four five months um <laughs> you can correct my math if i'm wrong there i don't even know what month it is anymore when i do these it's still october when i'm doing these so i don't know um, but really focusing on your health and well-being over the next few months is going to be pivotal to you, Leo, and you might find that you need to make some adjustments in this area or some adjustments in terms of your work. This could also be a time when you're headhunted for a new job or you find yourself, um, you know, getting some sort of milestone in terms of health and fitness matters too. We also this month have that partial lunar eclipse in Taurus in your 10th house, again opposing the sun in your 4th. Full moons, full moon eclipses are I believe what everyone calls full moons on steroids, they're that bit more emotional. This could really bring up some emotions surrounding your career, this could bring up some emotions surrounding your long term goals, your status, your titles, your reputation. Um, and your relationship with your boss or your relationship with authority in general. The new North Node position for 2022 is going to be in your career sector, Leo. This could be a time when you find your calling, you find in terms of your job, you get more satisfaction, you know what you want, you know what you're going after with the North Node being there. And because of its opposition to the South Node going into your fourth house, you could really be healing your relationship with the past and your family, but that's still to come. But you may feel a bit uh, a bit more aware of what that's gonna look like for you, especially around the 19th of November. We then have Sagittarius season, which is a really fun one for you going into December. There's a lot of fun activity happening in terms of love, creativity, happiness, pleasure, what makes you feel artistic, what makes you feel expressive. You could be showing 
yourself off on stage or on social media or something like that um, from the 22nd onwards, especially when Mercury goes in there. It's great for your social media profile if you have one, or it's great for writing a song, or it's great for writing poetry um, or getting your creative ideas down on paper. We also have a trine happening between Mars and Scorpio. Watch out for that, by the way, because it might be causing some friction in terms of home. It might also make you, um, and this I don't, this really isn't a Leo trait, but it might also make you remember something from the past that makes you angry at somebody all over again, or you could find yourself remembering being slighted and getting really defensive about it. There is a trine happening between this area and Neptune in your eighth house, which is beautiful for healing Leo. Um, Neptune's in Pisces, which Pisces is your eighth house, and it's bringing you a lot of healing in terms of intimacy and closeness, and its connection with your fourth house means that you could really be healing um, financially in terms of payments surrounding a home, or you could be forgiving someone from the past that wronged you, or even maybe, you know, even maybe reconciling with somebody that you fell out with over whatever. But your oracle card, your tarot card for this month is the two of cups which is lovely. It's funny this as well because we do have direct motion now with Saturn and Jupiter in your partnership zone and the Scorpio season activates the fixed square between Saturn and your partnership zone and Uranus in your career zone. So with your fourth house of family and home squaring off with your partnership sector and opposing your career sector, these things could all come into focus, but squares can actually get things resolved. So for you with the two of cups, there's likely to be a focus as well this month on connection, possibly new love, possibly on reconnecting with a partner, possibly on falling in love, maybe even getting engaged, maybe making something official or something like that, Leo, with the two of cups. It's a lovely omen. So that's what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Virgo, welcome to your November 2021 horoscope. This is for Virgo, Sun, Moon and Rising. So Virgo, Scorpio season puts a lot of focus on your communication, but also your rituals. So this is a wonderful month to figure out a new ritual for yourself or practice a ritual. If you are a witchy person, this could be moon magic. This could be manifesting under a new moon. This could be setting up a manifestation progress um, practice. This could be setting up some sort of spiritual routine for yourself. This could be setting up a routine in your day-to-day -day life that's going to make you more productive, that's going to make things flow. This uh, particular season also has a big focus for you Virgo on your siblings and your neighbours, meaning that these might be something in the spotlight for you around this time. Sometimes that can be when you have um, a sibling who has a birthday or it can be a neighbour that has a birthday or it can be that your sibling or your neighbour are changing something in their life that's important for you to know in terms of news. This could also be a time that's very busy for you. You're getting a lot of communication and you're really focusing on how you converse with other people. You might be more chatty than usual Virgo as well. We have a new moon in Scorpio on the fourth and this is going to be opposing Uranus in Taurus which is your ninth house of higher philosophy, education, it's um, to do with travel, that sort of thing. Because there's an opposition here to the Taurus energies and there's also a partial eclipse in Taurus this month Virgo, there's going to be a bit of focus for you on what it is that you believe in, what it is that you believe in terms of your, you know, spiritual or religious perspectives, they could be changing this month and you could be getting a taste or a flavour of what the next couple of years are going to be in terms of your higher purpose, your faith, your religious perspective, um, your philosophical perspective, but also if you decide maybe you want to study something new or maybe you want to change route in terms of your education, you could be finding yourself around this new moon really thinking about something you're interested in and thinking, well, should I be doing this as a career? So. With this month, there's going to be a lot of focus on both your everyday learning, your relationships with siblings and neighbours, but also your higher perspective, your opportunities to travel, your opportunities to learn, and your opportunity to study something new or have a different viewpoint of the world. So around the 19th, pay attention to the themes that come up uh, because they could be linked to your future. It's also possibly with that eclipse, um, not to jump ahead too much, but I'm going to do it anyway. With that eclipse, because of its harmonious aspect to Neptune, that's the prime aspect of this eclipse, Neptune's in your seventh house. Travel and learning and study could be linked to a partnership in some aspect. It could be traveling to see a partner, starting a long-term relationship, um, 
you know, somebody overseas could suddenly become a romantic interest for you or someone from a very different background. Those type of things could be linked. It could also be business with a foreign entity um, in your company. So other things we have this month for you, Virgo. I like this one for you the most. Venus is moving into Capricorn on the 5th and it's going to be staying there until March 2022, bringing benefits to your happiness, bringing benefits to your love life, bringing benefits to your creativity, your relationship with your children. Venus going through here for a long term it means that Venus is bringing benefits to these areas. Could be a wonderful time for you to fall in love or meet somebody new, meet somebody who is a lot of fun. Meet someone who's really good vibes to them. The Venus is going to go retrograde in December. We'll talk about that then. But Venus going through the fifth house could bring blessings to you, especially creatively if you're a creative person. But it could bring a lot of opportunities for parties, socialization and performance. So you could be finding yourself Virgo around this time, taking hold of the spotlight a little bit more. Um, this looks like a really lovely long-term transit for you and it is going to be connecting with Pluto bringing transformation to this particular area for you as well which in terms of your creative life or your romantic life could be a really positive thing because Pluto can bring you the kind of change that you want not just changes with Pluto that seem to be scary or um, dark. Uh, Pluto is a very misunderstood planet just as Hades was a very misunderstood guy. <laughs> so, um, other things coming up for you this month. We have Sagittarius season right around the corner. That is to do with your home and family. It's going to bring a lot of attention there. And then eclipses are going to start happening in Sagittarius season two. But it's going to bring you a lot of warmth to your home. It's going to bring you a lot of focus to your home. Um, changing your home, decorating your home. Maybe decorating early for Christmas at the end of November. For those of you that celebrate it. And it also has a beautiful trine between Neptune and your seventh house and the Scorpio placements. If you're looking for love this month, Virgo, ask a sibling or a neighbour to set you up with somebody or you might find that you see a neighbour in a different way or a friend in a different way but these could have some positive connections to your romantic life and your relationships this month. It could also be that if you're in a current relationship um, you could be finding that you're spending time with maybe a sibling of yours or a sibling of theirs or you could just be communicating more effectively bringing a bit of healing and transformation to your partnership and relationship. One thing I will say Virgo, watch your words this month, Mars and Mercury in Scorpio. You might say something very well intentioned, it could come across a bit more aggressive than you intended. So just be careful of how you phrase things, especially if you're feeling very heated. Just because Mercury and Mars can bring a sharpness, you're ruled by Mercury. And when it connects to Mars, it could make you more inclined to say something in the heat of the moment you don't mean in a bid to be more direct but you can say what you mean it's just how you say it so watch out for that this month which is funny because you got the messenger of air which is the knight of swords in tarot and this is all about being careful and cautious by being too hasty too direct too um impulsive this month but it's also likely with so much third house activity and Uranus in the mix Virgo there could be a lot of rapid change this month things could be moving really quickly you could be finding changes coming in really quickly having to think on your feet a lot having to orchestrate some sort of event having to be more social you could also have a lot of news surrounding air sign people in your life um, they would be Aquarius, Gemini and Libra, Sun, Moon and Rising people. There could be a lot of change happening and I do think this could be quite a busy month for you too Virgo. So that's what I have for you. Also make sure to keep checking your inboxes because you could get an important email or an important text message or voicemail. Make sure you're checking these this month as well because it could be quite important and it could be quite good. So that's what I have for you Virgo and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Libra, Sun, Moon and Rising. Welcome to your November horoscope. So Libra, this is the season that is representative of your money, your income, your assets, and also what you place value on. It's where you spend your money too. So there's a big focus on your finances this month in Scorpio season. We have Mars there. We have Mercury leaving your sign after an extended stay and moving into Scorpio as well. We have a new moon in Scorpio on the 4th and this is Scorpio season up until the 22nd. So for you Libra there is a lot of focus on your money. With the new moon in your financial sector it's a wonderful time to set some intentions or some rules or some standards regarding your financial life, your spending, your assets etc. 
and also how your money relates to other people you know who you're joint with financially if you have for example uh, a shared resource with somebody your inheritance the money that you get from the government or the money that you owe the government or things like that those can come into focus too because we do have Uranus going through your eighth house meaning that there could be some surprises in terms of money for you it could be an, um, a surprising bill, it could be a surprising uh, gift of money, it really is anybody's guess to be honest with Uranus, but it is going to be opposing that Newman in Scorpio, I do have a video on that if you want to check it out, um, but Uranus is going to oppose all the Scorpio placements this month, including Mars, and I just want to highlight this as one day for you, the 17th, there could be fights surrounding money or fights surrounding inheritance or um, any financial matters in general around that time with Mars and Uranus opposing. This might be a good time to have uh, an awareness of what it is that matters to you most and where you're placing value at this time. It could also be fighting over value, you know, how you value your time, your resources or spending with the partner. In particular, it could be that um, with Uranus there, it could be that your partner has unexpected uh, expenditure this month that you didn't foresee or didn't expect that could result in an argument. So just watch out for money arguments this month, but also see it as an opportunity for you to really get your finances in order. It is also a month that because your financial sector is trining the Neptune and Pisces aspect, um, it's going to be trining the Sun, I believe, in the 12th, and then it's going to trine Mars on the 29th. Those are good dates for your money in terms of your work and routine. It could also be that around those times a job presents itself that could actually make you more money or ways of making more money appear for you, Libra. But this is a big month in terms of your finances, especially because we have a full moon Taurus eclipse in the 19th. If you have any placements in your chart of 27 degrees of the fixed signs, um, 27 degrees exactly for you, if you have any placements there, uh, take note of what planet it is, what sign it is, and what themes could be coming up, because it's likely around this full moon eclipse for you, Libra, that you will notice themes for the next year or so because this new moon, this full moon, sorry, I keep saying new moon because it's going to be with the north node, so there's usually an association there, um, <clears throat> but it is going to be a north node eclipse, meaning that it's to do with your destiny, it's to do with the next path that you're taking and where your focus is going to be over the next couple of years and it's in your eighth house of shared resources. So this could be a time when a lot of you find yourself sharing your resources with another person. That can be through marriage, that can be through property, it can be through inheritance, it can be through tax, it can be through many different avenues but you'll sort of notice the themes that come up for you around that full moon Libra. Uh, it could be that there's some changes coming to those areas for you as well. There could be a letting go of something in that particular area. It could also be something pretty much psychological for you because the eighth house is to do with psychological breakthroughs. You might be having some kind of epiphany, you might be getting some awareness of what you feel on a psychological level if you've been dealing with any issues there or if you've just been dealing with some self sabotage behavior or patterns of behavior that you really have exposed around this full moon you feel really strongly about them and you have this opportunity to transform because any eclipse in the eighth house is usually to do with transformation in your inner world you know it can be as I say to do with other people's money but it's really a sense of rebirth for a person it's the egoic death and letting go of what's kept you stuck I often find with eighth house transits they free they genuinely do and I, I don't mean this to be um, <clears throat> fluffy in an astrological perspective but the eighth house for me in observation has generally been where change has come in to free you from something restrictive you know friendships that end in the eighth house with eighth house aspects or transits are usually friendships that are dead they're not working um, so you're always aware of them really it's usually that your ego is standing in the way and keeping you stuck in something so if something is wrapping up around this time it's likely something that has been dead for some time and it's bringing in new energy with the north node going into Taurus in 2022 so just bear that in mind don't be scared of eighth house aspects <clears throat> just to make you aware so we also have Venus entering Capricorn and this is an interesting one because this is going to put a lot of focus on your family, this is going to put a lot of focus on your home for the foreseeable. So right up until 2022, this could be a time when you move, you get a new property, you find your dream home. This could be a time when you start a family, this could be a time when you heal relationships with your family or you redecorate in a way that suits your tastes. If you're going to do that, Libra, uh, because you're such an aesthetic sign, if you're going to do that, do it before Venus goes retrograde because the things that you buy when Venus is in retrograde, 
you really will, when it goes direct, wonder why you bought that. I mean, I remember last year not taking my own advice with the astrology and buying bed linen when Venus was retrograde. Um, <laughs> it was retrograde in my fourth house, bear this in mind. I really was inspired to redecorate and I just got it so wrong. I didn't redecorate the whole um, aesthetic, but I waited until a long time after. But the things that I did buy when Venus was retrograde in my fourth house for the home, I got bedding with like cartoon sloths doing yoga on it and I just, I don't know, I don't know. Just, just if you're going to get something, get it this month for your home. If you're going to redecorate or you're moving or something like this. Um, because your fourth house is to do with your home and your cushy surroundings. But it can also be a time of healing with family dynamics if they've been strained uh, or starting a family, but bringing in more cozy feelings. So we also have this month Sagittarius season coming up on the 22nd. That for you is going to be very communicative. It's going to focus on your uh, neighborhood, your siblings, your communication style, your communication skill. It's going to focus on your schooling if you're still in school. It's going to focus on your news sources, your ingestion of media and information. And Sagittarius season is a time when you can have a lot of intellectually stimulating conversations and really focus your mind on things you want to learn and expand, Libra. We do have a trine coming up between Mars and Neptune. As I say, that's going to benefit you in terms of your health. It's going to benefit you in terms of your well-being, your routine. And in some regards, Libra, this could really benefit you financially. With Mars going through Scorpio for the whole month, you're going to find that you are really focused and really driven to make money for yourself. And um, Mars going through the second house can also rule aggressive spending. So just be careful of spending too much. But I do think if you're going to spend your money on anything, it might be the home with Venus going into Capricorn. Um, just to make you aware as well, I've not been mentioning this too much for the other signs because it's the third and final square between Mercury and uh, Pluto, but also the final trine between Mercury and Jupiter. But because Mercury's in your sign, it's very specific for you. This will have been a repetitive theme. Mercury's going to try and Jupiter on the first for you, Libra. This could be a really romantic time for you. This could rule um, with it being Jupiter in your fifth house. This could be to do with romance. This could be due to do with contracts surrounding romance, surrounding creativity, pleasure, um, happiness passion, that kind of thing. There could be good news surrounding those areas. But there is on the second a bit of tension between Pluto in your family sector, squaring off with Mercury in your first house. There could be a bit of a clash with family, but with squares, typically this is for something to get resolved. You might figure out, right, this really needs attention. I've put this off long enough in terms of home or family matters. So your tarot card was the Eight of Pentacles. I like the Eight of Pentacles. It's kind of an apprenticeship energy. It's where you're really working on something. You've been working on something for a while. It's going to benefit you in the long run. It's going to bring you to the Nine and Ten of Pentacles later on. So keeping focused on your education, on your work, um, it's going to be something that really benefits you this month. Libra It's where you're going to see a lot of success. And just the projects you're working on in general are going to start to bear fruit. You're going to start to see them working for you. You're going to start to see results. And it feels like it could be to do with something that's been a bit of a struggle for a long time. Jupiter and Saturn are now direct in Aquarius, which means this might be a bit easier for you to get results. So that's what I have for you, Libra, and I'll talk to you soon. Hi, Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising. Happy birthday, Scorpios. It's your season. Do comment your birthday down below, um, especially if you're November 14th, because that's mine. Um, but do let me know your birthday in the comment section below. It's nice to see how many Scorpios there are in the audience and how many um, Scorpios are October Scorpios, November Scorpios, or even here just Scorpio Moon and Rising. You can put down your degree of Scorpio. So, Scorpio, there's a lot going on this month because we have your ruler, your traditional ruler, Mars in the mix. And Mars is in your sign. And Mars loves being in Scorpio. Um, Mars in Scorpio is going to be very driven very determined and very ambitious to get what it is that it wants. You're going to be the same. With Mars going through your sign, you're going to have a boost of energy. You're going to have a boost of confidence. You're going to have a boost of momentum to get things done. But Mars going through your sign can also really wear you out if you're not careful. So just make sure that during this time you are taking ample time to rest and recharge when you need it, Scorpio. 
we still have Mercury in Libra for the first four days of October and that's your 12th house and before it leaves it's going to square Pluto your ruler again meaning that if there's something that needs to be discussed with a neighbor or a sibling or someone in your friendship group that elephant in the room that um, triggering conversation will probably come up in the first few days of November but in your 12th house it's also connecting to Jupiter in your fourth house in a trine aspect suggesting there could actually be some good news surrounding the home property or family matters as well on the first of November. So two main focus points are the new moon in Scorpio and the full moon in Taurus. New moon in Scorpio on the fourth, I do have a video on this, but to summarize, this is a new start for you to get your hair done, to change your appearance, to invest in new clothing, to invest in new items that make you feel good, new skin care, new hair care, um, new pieces for your wardrobe. You're going to be very aware of what suits you and what doesn't with Mars in your sign. You are very determined to rebrand yourself this month, Scorpio, in a way that suits you. You know, figuring out your personal style, your personal aesthetic, your personal wants, your personal vision, especially if it's creative around that um, new moon because of the 12th, 12, deg 12 degrees aspect to this, especially if it's creative for you. And also if it's quite spiritual. So that new moon in Scorpio is going to be opposing Uranus in your partnership sector, meaning that your new beginning may need to be balanced out with a relationship or a partnership. Um, a partnership or relationship could surprise you this month in many capacities. That can be a good thing, just so you know, with Uranus in the mix, Uranus can bring good surprises. Uranus can bring tricky surprises. Uranus can bring changes. Uranus can bring um, a need to think on your feet, but it can be very innovative. So for a lot of Scorpios, this opposition from Uranus could be your partner surprising you with something, um, which makes a lot of sense because it is birthday season. So don't freak out about that too much. I know a lot of people actually already are, but Uranus can bring a lot of surprises and shocks, but really this month we're seeing it a lot on the main stage. But if you do have anything at 12 degrees of Scorpio, give or take a few degrees either side, you could be very affected by this new moon, especially if this new moon is on your birthday, 4th of November, uh, 3rd, 4th or 5th of November, there could be something new coming for you this year that you've maybe not experienced before. So, Venus is entering Capricorn on the 5th, like this for you because Venus is going to be going into your third house of communication. Venus is going to be retrograding as well later on in the mix, but we will get to that whenever it comes. Venus in your third house can bring a lot of harmony and benefits with a sibling, with a neighbour. This can actually be as well because Venus is going to go retrograde. A lot of Scorpios could... <clears throat> reunite with a sibling. So this can be for many reasons. This can be estrangement, this can be distance, this can just be reunions, all that sort of thing. It can similarly be neighbours or it can be friends. You could hear from old friends, you could hear from old neighbours. But this transit is going to be right up until March 2022, meaning that there's going to be a bit of a a sense of reconnection and revisiting maybe even your old neighborhood where you used to be. There's a bit of nostalgia attached to your uh, teen years with this particular placement. You could connect with people you knew when you were a teenager. But um, Venus going through your third house is really going to give you charm and charisma and you're going to be able to ask for what you want in a way that is so charming and so smooth. And it's gonna make you very influential. So if you're in social media or you're in a career where you need to speak up for yourself or you need to articulate your thoughts, you need to present yourself, great transit for that. Especially because Mercury goes into your sign the same day, meaning that you have this mercurial way of expressing who you truly are. We also have the sun in your sign trining Neptune on the 12th and Mars in your sign trining Neptune on the 29th. Two lovely days to circle in your diary as ones of idealism, healing, forgiveness, love and romance. Very good for those areas. We also have a <laughs> eclipse in Taurus. So I want to talk to you about this one because I know a lot of um, people are probably a bit freaked out by eclipses at this point because we keep hearing their full moons and steroids, they bring about a lot of change. My experience of eclipses is a lot of the time they can bring change um, in a way that is a bit more gradual than they're perceived to be because they're connected with the nodes and the nodes go through about a year to a year and a half to two years in a set of signs. So this is going to be a screenshot, a snapshot, a 
looking glass into the future of what the North Node moving into Taurus means for you. Full moon in your partnership sector can be for some people that are in unhealthy relationships and ending. If you're in a healthy relationship, it can bring positive change for the future. As I say, it's North Node, it's to do with destiny. So for a lot of Scorpios, this could be transformation in your seventh house of relationships, partnerships and marriage. Those are being changed around this time. It could also be that something something comes up with your partner that is unexpected or needs to be dealt with as a relationship. This month is, of course, activating the fixed T-square. Scorpio is the part of the fixed T-square with that Saturn-Uranus square going on in Taurus and Aquarius. And so for you, Scorpio, you are the missing component in the tension between possibly your family and your spouse or your living arrangement and your partner um, or the past and focusing on a partnership. So you're really figuring out where you fit into this particular puzzle and you're really figuring out how you feel about these different areas. But with Jupiter and Saturn now direct in your fourth house, by the end of the year, there's a potential for your home and family life to be really positive, really benefiting from all of this. We then move into Sagittarius season, which for you is all about money. It's all about the money that you make, you can find in Sagittarius season, your income changes, your assets changes and what you place value on change as well. So Scorpio, your card, I love this for you as well because this is one of the only, um, I think this might be one of the, I think there's maybe only two major arcanas but you got a major arcana, you got the world which means a successful completion of a project or a phase. I do think for a lot of you this month is about leveling up into the next chapter. You have successfully completed a phase of your life and you're on to something new, but it's a good thing. It's not like the death card where change comes in and you're um, you know, really shocked at it. It's, it's the world card is about something you've been building for a long time. Maybe a relationship is reaching a new phase. Maybe you're finishing a course, maybe you're graduating, maybe you are getting a new job or anything like this. You're moving into a new phase of success, Scorpio. And the world is your oyster, so I like this for you. Have a beautiful November, happy birthday, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your November horoscope. So Sagittarius, there's a lot of focus this month on your 12th house. Now this is quite a vulnerable house. This is quite private. This is quite quiet. It can be quite a point and a place of solitude and introspection. So what that means is that you might not be feeling necessarily too social in the beginning of the month. You might not be feeling too excited to go to parties or get out and about. You might be feeling a little bit more like you want to cozy up at home. You want to spend time with your nearest and dearest um, or your pets or something like this. You could be finding that you really just want to keep it a little bit more of a closed circle at this time and not really invite any new energies in. You could be quite reflective at this time as well, thinking about the past. Now, there's gonna be a lot of oppositions this month between the 12th house and the sixth, meaning that there could be, because Uranus is the opposition in the sixth and we have a full moon eclipse in the sixth, there could be surprises in these areas. So there could be surprises in terms of health, in terms of fitness, in terms of routine, diet, pets, your job, your colleagues, um, and your day-to-day -day routine. There could be changes and surprises in that area for you this month, something unexpected or something innovative. You could be bringing in a new, fresh energy. You could be seeing things uh, differently in terms of the future because Uranus is a very innovative planet, likes to think ahead, likes to be forward thinking. It's usually ahead of the curve with trends and things like that. So Uranus could be injecting a bit of excitement, surprise, and intrigue or a bit of shocks into these areas for you. Um, but really with, with it being Uranus, I know that Uranus gets a bit of a bad <laughs> I know that Uranus gets a bit of a bad rep, but sometimes surprises can be nice. Okay, that's something that can come up with this. Now the full moon and Taurus eclipse, full moons are chapters closing or revealing emotions or illuminating feelings that you maybe haven't been so conscious of in a while, maybe you've been too busy to focus on because it's happening in your sixth house. This could be your feelings about your work. This could be your feelings about your day-to-day -day routine. It could be feelings you have surrounding your health, your well-being, your diet, um, your fitness, that sort of thing. You could be wrapping up a chapter around this time. It's possible, of course, Sagittarius, that you're ripping, you're ripping up, <laughs> you're wrapping up a particular goal in these areas that you could be celebrating. With it being an eclipse, the energy is heightened. So there could be some unexpected energies <clears throat> surrounding those areas as well. So just make sure that this month your health and well-being is a big priority. When we have oppositions between the 6th and the 12th, 
It can often be where you're on one side of the spectrum, on one side of the scales, you're maybe too spiritual. You're maybe too in your head about uh, intuition. You're thinking too much about the spiritual side of things that you're neglecting, you know, your diet, you're neglecting your exercise, your well-being, your fitness um, and your health practices. Or it can be, on the other hand, that you're too sceptical, you're too determined to get on with things that you neglect your emotions and your intuition and your spiritual side. This month is a good time to get a balanced routine that incorporates both. It will make this month go a lot smoother. If you meditate every day and then say pull an oracle card or journal your feelings every day or visualize your future, you know, having these things into your routine and also trying to establish, you know, healthy habits for yourself will make this month go a lot smoother for you Sagittarius. Um, especially while you're feeling quite introspective. Now, a really nice thing happening for you though on the 5th of November, Venus is going into your second house. So, Venus in the second house can be really good for your money, it can be really good for your finances, it can make you want to spend more money as well because it's Venus. Uh, you could find a lot more items that you like the look of that match your particular tastes and styles. Venus going through Capricorn for you could bring in some new ways of making money. Your business could be recommended more. You could be put forward for a raise. You could be put forward for, um, you know, a salary increase. It's something that brings you more money or just brings you more value. This is actually a really interesting time to go antique shopping or upscale used furniture because it is the second house. You could find a hobby around this time that involves items from the past, antiques, that sort of thing. Um, you could also find around this time that you are healing a relationship with money. You know, Venus can bring really positive energies that can actually be very healing, not in a psychological or spiritual way as we'd see with the 12th and 8th house, but more in a way of healing through doing or shifting your values, you know, figuring out what it is that matters most to you and focusing on that right up until March 2022. Mercury goes into Scorpio on that day too, meaning you're a little bit more private with your thoughts and your feelings. You're better at reading people. Mars is going through there too. You could actually be, with Mars and Mercury conjunct in your 12th house, you could actually be a little bit hard on yourself internally, especially in terms of regrets, in terms of past experiences. You could your inner narrative, your inner voice, if you have one, I know some people don't, could be a little bit harsh. Uh, a little bit remorseful, regretful, all these different things. Try to cope with those feelings in a way that's healthy for you. I do recommend journaling for you this month just to make sense of your, your feelings and offload them onto pieces of paper. With Mercury and Mars, sometimes words can be quite aggressive. For you, it's in your inner world. So just make sure you're nice to yourself. Make sure you're talking to yourself in a way that's nice. I do think a lot of you could be harboring some regret from the past, especially around the fourth with that new moon in Scorpio and its opposition from Uranus, I think a lot of you could be wanting to heal something specific. For some of you, it could be related to your physical health or it could be related to your job. You could be, for example, bringing in a therapist or a psychologist or even someone in the occult, like an astrologer, a tower reader, a Reiki healer. I actually think with a lot of you, with the 12th house and 6th house, I would recommend Reiki this month if you've never done it. Uh, some of you could also be training to be Reiki healers or be a healer of some kind in general with that new moon. But if you haven't tried an alternative healing practice and you're feeling out of sorts, it might be a month to try it. Again, as I say, not to negate or write off anything that's in the sixth house, which is to do with traditional medicine, I suppose, but it's just more about looking after your spiritual well-being too. Again, not a medical professional, so I'm not telling you what to do medically. Um, just saying that the twelfth house and the sixth house need to be balanced with each other. So other things coming up this month. We have your season. On the 22nd, you'll want to party a little bit more. You'll be back to being your old self. You will have investigated some old ghosts, old feelings. You'll have healed. You'll have slept a bit more. Um, and your energy will start to balance out Sagittarius on the 22nd. You'll want to be more social, especially when Mercury goes in there. You'll have the gift of the gab and everyone will be very happy to see you return. So you're tarot card this month was the seven of wands again watch your inner voice it might make you quite defensive you might take things more personally this month you might feel like you need to stand up for yourself a little bit more um, especially if colleagues or clients 
um, or employees are a little bit more aggressive than usual or shock you this month you might get very defensive just let the energies blow over especially in the 17th don't be reactive in the 17th because everybody is and it's better to just take a little step back and not say anything especially with Mars in your 12th house you might take something that a colleague uh, says very personally that's also a good day to book off work and rest if you can so that is what I have for you Sagittarius and I will talk to you soon Hi Capricorn, welcome to your November horoscope. So Capricorn, this is primarily a very social month for you. It's very full of social activity right up until the 22nd where you're going to see a bit of a shift in gears and you might become a bit more private, introspective and quiet. But until then we have a lot of activity in your 11th house including a new moon in Scorpio. So the new moon in Scorpio on the 4th, again I do have a video on this but just to summarize it here, this is a wonderful new moon to manifest some new friendships, to manifest new social activities, social causes, hobbies, anything that gets you socializing with other people, makes you feel connected to other people. If you think that sounds like hell, this is also a new moon to manifest a wish of your choosing. It's a wonderful time to get out into the universe what it is that you want to manifest for yourself because new moons in the 11th house are magic. I'm surprised people don't talk about this more enough. They are magic. So if you really want something, this is a new moon to have a ritual or set an intention. It's going to be opposite Uranus. Now, Uranus is in your fifth house this month and for the foreseeable. But this month in particular, it is opposing your 11th house placements. Um, I have to say, a lot of you could have unexpected pregnancies this month or unexpected... Um, new romances appear for you you know if those scare you obviously you have free will and choice you know it's not like it's just necessarily going to happen to you but I have seen Uranus in the fifth get a few Capricorn risings in particular with new babas <laughs> it seems to have been and it's only been there since 2018 I've seen it a few times now um, so you've been warned but it can also be a new romantic relationship coming into the fore from you out of nowhere. Uh, so those things need to be balanced out. Your relationships with your friends and your romance need to be balanced out this month. This means that maybe if you're in a new relationship, you're excluding your friendships or maybe you're always with your friends. You're not making time for dating. You know, maybe your friends are sort of uh, gatekeeping you from romances or something like this, but it's, it's a wonderful time to figure out that balance for you Capricorn. Could be that you actually fall in love with a friend unexpectedly this month, or you find out a friend has feelings for you that you didn't expect, or someone in your social circle, um, or you could meet love online as well this month, just need to let you know that. Biggest news for you is that Venus goes into your sign in the 5th and it's going to be there till March 2022. That's a long time to have Venus in Capricorn. For you Capricorn, this is going to make you extra beautiful, extra magnetic, charming, graceful, alluring. You're going to be very persuasive. You're going to look your best. You're going to figure out your style. You're going to figure out your aesthetic if you haven't already or it's just going to enhance with this particular transit. Later on, Venus is going to go retrograde. That could be quite different. It could definitely be a re-examination of these areas. But until then, um, we will stick with Venus bringing you the benefits to your first house. So you're glowing, you look your best. And even when it's retrograde, it doesn't take that away. There just might be a bit of a need to not spend money on things while it's retrograde because you might buy something and really regret it. So that is what I have for you, Capricorn, for that. Um, other things happening this month, there is a beautiful trine between the Sun and Neptune on the 12th, the Sun in your 11th house and Neptune in your 3rd. Great day for spending with friends, great day for spending time with your social circle. Do make time for friends this month because it is something that you will enjoy. Um, and if you don't get to make time for them then, the 29th of November is another hit at that with Mars trining Neptune. You might actually reconcile with a friend or get an apology from someone who used to be a friend or some kind of apology from a team or healing a team dynamic around that time. Other things happening for you this month, the tension this month, there could be some tension with your, say you're dating someone and you introduce them to your friends, there could be a bit of tension between them. There could also be a bit of artistic differences this month around the 17th if you're working on artistic projects with other people. I think you might want to push your comfort zone in terms of your art, in terms of your love, in terms of your, what makes you happy. You're changing up what that means for you and it might be that people that you work with or you're social with 
um, or has some kind of say in your long-term goals or aspirations might not get the vision necessarily Capricorn but Venus is in your sign you get the vision so we then have Sagittarius season as I say very quiet very introspective so with the full moon eclipse in Taurus that's happening on the 19th it's at 27 degrees of Taurus if you have 27 degrees of any of the earth placements in your chart you're likely going to be getting a blessing from this um, if you have 27 degrees of any of the fixed signs, you're getting an activation. So this full moon for you is happening in your fifth house, as I say, unexpected developments in love. If you're dating someone and you don't see, I think I have glitter all over my face from this jumper. If you are dating someone and you don't see a future, that full moon could just write it off. If you are in a romantic relationship and you want to take it to the next level, that full moon might be a conversation about it. If you are trying to have a child or trying to conceive that full moon might reveal it um some of you could also be giving birth around this time or some of you could be um getting this inspiration in terms of your art and your creativity and your passions and your hobbies and what makes you feel joyous but this is a lovely you know month for really pushing the envelope creatively but also experiencing exciting romance in your life if you are dating or otherwise. Um, there could also be some unexpected twists and turns in your romantic life or surrounding your children. Uh, with Uranus, it's anybody's guess what they are. There just seems to be an element of surprise there. So your tarot card was the Seven of Cups. A lot of surprises, a lot of options. Different things will present themselves to you this month, Capricorn. You may also find yourself linked to people that are Scorpio or Scorpio, Sun, Moon or Rising in particular or Pisces, Sun, Moon, Arising, or even Cancer. But it seems to me that you could be linked to these people in a big way in November, Capricorn. With the Seven of Cups, you're sorting out your options and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. Um, you will have a lot of inspiration this month, but it's up to you to figure out what's going to be something you can sustain or not. So that's what I have for you, Capricorn, and I'll talk to you soon, bye. Hi, Aquarius, welcome to your November horoscope. So Aquarius, this month puts a big focus on your career. This is Scorpio season. We have a new moon in Scorpio on the 4th of November, which is a new beginning for you in terms of your long-term goals, your public image and your career. It's going to be opposed by Uranus. Now you're going to have to get comfortable with the fact there's a lot of oppositions this month between your home and family. And this is something that you're going to, oh, I've got a hair. Um, stuck on my face. <laughs> You're gonna have to get used to this opposition and the way that you get used to it is by figuring out how to balance it because Uranus is going to be bringing a bit of surprises, maybe a bit of chaos, maybe a bit of uh, shock but maybe also a little bit of freedom in terms of your home and your family matters. It could be that you're figuring out around this time how to get past issues, how to be innovative with Uranus. Or it could be that somebody in your family throws you a curveball or two, or matters come up in family that you didn't expect, especially around the 19th with a full moon Taurus eclipse. You could be finding that there is a closing out of a cycle in a family dynamic in a family relationship. Maybe you're moving homes. Maybe you're having to move house. Maybe you are selling a property. Maybe you are renovating in a big way. Maybe somebody in your family has something to tell you or maybe there's something to tend to in family matters. Um, it could also be that you're finally releasing the past that you've held on to and potentially forgiving somebody because it is going to be in positive alignment with Neptune and Neptune's in your second house of value. I feel like you because of ne not Neptune, because of Jupiter and Saturn in your sign now direct, you've changed a lot. And I think this is going to be reflected to you in November because when we started having the fixed T-square activations, we had them in August there with Leo getting into <laughs> the mix with the Saturn Uranus square, your two traditional rulers. I think you've changed a lot this year and I think you're probably feeling a lot stronger. I think you're probably feeling a lot wiser. I think you're probably feeling really very emotionally mature in many ways as well. Um, and it's not to say you weren't these things before, but I think you'll figure out in November just how much you've actually grown, especially with that full moon eclipse. Now, for you this month, um, Aquarius, setting new goals for yourself is important as well. With Mars being there, you're more likely to meet them, but there could be some clashes with authority, especially around the 17th. Um, Mars is in your fourth house, sorry, 
No, Mars is in your 10th house. I was right about that. Mars is in your 10th house, opposing Uranus in your 4th. Okay, so there could be some clashes with authority. You could also find yourself really trying to meet your career goals or being very work focused and someone in your family feels like you missed something or they feel like you're not paying them enough attention. Venus is going into Capricorn for the long haul here. It's going into Capricorn and will remain there until March 2022 because there will be a retrograde. Now Capricorn's your 12th house, you already have Pluto there. So Venus going through your 12th house is a wonderful time for you if you work in spirituality, if you work in healing, if you work in um, the medical field as well. This can be a wonderful time for you to get new clients, to progress, to um, develop your business, to develop your work if you're in those areas. There's a lot of benefic energy coming from Venus. However, there will be a retrograde, meaning you might be revising these things. With Venus going through your 12th house, you can probably safely assume around this time you'll be healing a lot of inner wounds, but you'll also be finding beauty in your own privacy. You'll be finding beauty in your own subconscious. You'll be finding things like psychology, healing, the occult, to be places of beauty and comfort rather than something scary, if it's something that's been scary to you before. Venus going through the 12th house has a way of making, you know, Venus makes the house it's in quite beautiful and quite aesthetic. So you could almost be having this really lovely like rebranding if you are a spiritual person or finding yourself drawn to more spiritual things like crystals or um, zodiac sign t-shirts or something like that you'll be finding around this time that that's really amping it up could also find your healing relationships with people from the past that's a big theme coming up for you Aquarius between now and the end of the year as well there's a lovely day on the 12th of November the sun in Scorpio your 10th house is trining Neptune in Pisces which is your second house so it could be a wonderful day to ask for a raise it could be a wonderful day to suggest in a um in kind of a, what is the word that I'm looking for? You know when you make a subtle suggestion, a subtle suggestion, you could be making a subtle suggestion that leads to more money for yourself in your career, your profession. Maybe you're, um, with the sun in your 10th house, you're able to impress people in authority and they want to compensate you for it. Um, but it could just be, if it's not a raise, it could just be that you're finding a way to assert yourself more financially. You know, you're, you're, more aware of what you can do, what you could do, because Neptune in the second house is to do with your talents as well, and it's to do with using your voice. So you could find yourself asking for something, or if you're doing an interview, you could appear to be the dream candidate with Neptune in the mix. Similar energies around the 29th. So those are two days to push forward in your career. We then have Sagittarius season on the 22nd, and this is going to open up a very social, um, a social time for you of socializing with friends, working on charitable endeavors, pursuing your long-term dreams. I also just wanna mention this, this month that there is going to be um, squares, from the Pluto placements, Pluto placements, the Scorpio placements to Jupiter in your sign and Saturn in your sign. So this could be a time when you're really figuring out um, maybe how to get a bit more independence in work or how to maybe make your career work for you. Uh, that could be a result of a little bit of tension in those areas. Your tarot card though, Aquarius, is the Empress. So this is beautiful energy bringing um, luxury, abundance. You might actually be finding this month that balancing career and home in a different way is more fulfilling for you. You could be attracting financial abundance with this card, of course. You could be harvesting a project um, or harvesting a relationship around that full moon eclipse. You could notice how much something has grown, but with the Empress, it could also be focusing on spending time with your mother or important females in your life which is where Uranus being in the fourth house makes sense. Balancing your fourth and 10th house makes sense. But for some reason this month, it really wants you to pay a lot of attention to the females in your life, the mothers in your life and your children if you have them. But the Empress generally brings abundance and fulfillment, I would say, in many aspects of your life. It's a lovely card to have for the month, Aquarius, getting into a state of abundance in all areas. So that's what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon, bye. Hi Pisces, welcome to your November horoscope. I hope I still have a voice for this um, because this is for Pisces sun, moon and rising and I'm in the Pisces rising camp so I hate leaving Pisces to last but it is the order of the zodiac. If you think I should change that up, do let me know. So Pisces, this is a big month in terms of philosophy, travel, education 
and honesty. So this is a month where you're likely to be a lot more honest about your feelings and your secret world. Pisces get away with it consistently, but Pisces is a very secretive sign. And you can oftentimes find yourself just feeling yourself through situations. And then sometimes the moment to say something or the moment to speak up can slip away from your grasp. So this month is gonna bring a lot of honest conversations to you, especially from the fifth when Mercury goes into Scorpio. This month puts a lot of focus on learning and higher education. It's very likely if you're a Pisces, especially because we have the Sun, the New Moon, Mercury and Mars all in your ninth house. It's very likely that Pisces or Pisces rising in particular are studying for something um, or considering a different route of education. And if you're thinking of starting something in that area, the 4th of November is the time to do it. That's the time to start a study process or um, start an application for something. The difficulty is with Uranus in the third house for you opposing this new moon, you might find that people throw unexpected facts or information at you that you didn't know or you weren't aware of. You might find siblings could throw curveballs at you this month or neighbours or friendships could throw curveballs at you this month or there could be unexpected facts that you've overlooked or unexpected um, communication that needs to happen in order to advance in your education. There is a need to balance your higher education, your philosophy, your worldview, maybe even your religious view and what you know to be true in the moment, you know, mindfulness, your daily routine. So you might find it hard to fit studying for something or applying for something or learning something or traveling somewhere into your routine as a way of balancing this month, Pisces, but you're going to have to figure out how to balance it this month because it's happening a lot. So. Other things happening for you this month, Venus is going into Capricorn on the 5th of November. It's going to be there up until March 2022. So that's a long time. And Venus is going to be in your 11th house. Now, Venus in the 11th house is wonderful for friendships. So for you, Pisces, especially because this is going to involve a retrograde, which is why it's so long. For you, you might be feeling like reconnecting with old friends. So this can be people that you were friends with in your teens or your university years, or you used to have shared projects with, you used to have shared causes with, you used to work with even. You might find yourself reconnecting with old friends, old, you know, social people you did social activities with. You might find yourself reconnecting with friends online as well. Um, but with Venus going through the sector, it's also great for making new friends and it's also wonderful for your wishes and long-term aspirations in general. You can really find the people you need to help you, Pisces. I do think with Venus going through the sector, you're likely going to be making some new friends in your life. Um, this could be something that you're not really looking for necessarily, but you're likely to be making new friends and they could be quite, you know, transformative for you because Pluto is in the mix with this transit. Similarly, with Venus retrograde, you could be actually letting go of some friends at some point too. But I do think for a lot of you, you're likely going to be friends with people who maybe share your worldview or who maybe have an interest in the occult because of Pluto being in the mix here. Um, but it's likely that you're going to be finding friendships are a big theme for you going forward. But also manifestation. If you've been missing having a load of planets in your 11th house. I know you had Jupiter in your 11th house last year, which is great for manifesting. If you've been miss missing that manifesting magic, now that you have Saturn and Jupiter direct in your 12th house and Venus going through your 11th, your manifestation powers might come back, Pisces, if you've been feeling like they haven't. Uh, other things happening for you this month, there's some trines to Neptune in your first house, the 12th of November, trying to your first house, and the 29th in particular are important for you in terms of spiritual epiphanies, spiritual awakenings, studying in a way that benefits you, education in a way that benefits you, travel, especially around the 29th actually, travel might benefit you quite a lot, Pisces. Uh, that could be something that's coming up for you as well. Now we have a conjunction between Mars and Mercury um, in your ninth house squaring Saturn and then opposing Uranus. So there's a bit of pressure in terms of potentially political discussions, religious discussions, spiritual discussions and if you feel yourself being quite aggravated it's likely coming from a place of feeling rejected because Saturn's in the 12th house you're afraid of being alone with your ideals or your beliefs potentially that might be more likely the source of a disagreement if you're fighting over these area, um, areas in particular you might also find that there is a curveball thrown in terms of your university or study 
um, or you might have a crisis of confidence, but you will get past that. And by the 29th, you actually have a lot of confidence in that area with Mars trining Neptune. We also have the full moon Taurus eclipse on the 19th. Um, that's at 27 degrees of Taurus. That for you is your third house. You might have some surprises or new information or change surrounding siblings, neighbors, uh, communication. Those things are gonna be highlighted for you. It might also be to do with your car or your uh, something you're selling or something you're um, learning in terms of school. So if you're a teacher or you're still in school, uh, there might be some sort of event comes up around this time that's quite significant. You might have a professor or a teacher leave or again some of you could be selling a car, some of you could be um, ceasing communication on a particular issue or topic. Then we have Sagittarius season from the 22nd onward and Mercury is going to be in there too. This is going to be a time of new beginnings for you Pisces in career. This is going to be a time when you're in the spotlight professionally. You might be attracting a lot of support from bosses, from people in authority. Great time for, you know, starting a new job with a new moon coming up later um, in Sagittarius. It could be a good time for you to invest a little bit more in your career or get a bit more clear even on what path you're taking. So for you, your tarot card was the Ace of Air, which is the Ace of Swords. Clarity, honesty, truth, communication are big themes for you this month and a new beginning intellectually for you Pisces. So that's what I have for you in November 2021. I hope you have a great month and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.